Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Pascal's triangle. Now, this is a very interesting object to mathematicians because there are tons of patterns hidden in this object. So, let's see how it's constructed first. So, we think about this in terms of rows. So, this is, I mean, this is called, it's the first row, but we actually call it the zero, zero row. And then this is kind of technically the first row. And then to get from rows, the pattern is you take the number the two numbers above it and then you add them so from here and here you add one plus two and you get three and then similarly if you want to go from this three and three you take three and three and you add these two numbers and you get six and this carries on to infinity um, the only numbers we can't add together are the ones on the edge but these are always just one so carrying on this pattern this is the second row and third, fourth, etc. And we'll see why um, we have this weird naming convention in a second. Um, because this is kind of motivated by binomial expansion. So when, when you want to expand those brackets out, this actually can help us um, to find the coefficients. And we're going to see this in a second. So to make the connection, let's start off very simply. So if we have a plus b, um, and we want to raise this to a power, let's start off with zero, then just by definition, anything to the power of zero is just equal to one. So that's not too interesting, but let's carry on. A plus B to the power of one. Well, anything to the power of one is just itself. So we have A plus B. Or you can think of this as one times A plus one times B. And then let's carry on. A plus B squared. Then this is A squared plus two AB plus B squared. And you can imagine these ones in here. So one, two, one. And maybe you can start seeing the pattern, but we have one, 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 two, one, which are exactly these numbers in Pascal's triangle. So let's do the ne uh, next one. A plus B cubed. Um, you can uh, check the algebra, but this comes out to be A cubed plus three A squared B plus three A times B squared plus B cubed. And again, you can put these imaginary ones in here. So one a cubed, one b cubed. And these numbers, one, three, three, one, are the third row. And so you see the pattern now, why you name this zero, one, two, because if you take a and b and you raise them to a power, so n, any number you want, then the nth row in Pascal's triangle tells you the coefficients, um, the numbers you put in front of the terms. So a, a cubed, a squared b, as long as you follow this pattern, Pascal's triangle is gonna always tell you um, the coefficients, which is a very handy uh, technique. So this would give us the fourth row, and I'm not going to write it out, but what if we wanted to find the fifth row? So we could either do this by hand, it would take a long time, or we could just work out the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So let's do that. Remember, we put ones on the edges. I need to rub this out. Um, and then to get the middle terms, we take the two numbers above it and we add them together. So this is five. This one is 10. This one's 10 and this one's 5. So this tells us the coefficients. We have a to the power of 5. Well, if I don't, if I write it without the coefficients first, and then we can add them later. But the pattern here is a to the power of 4 times b plus a cubed times b squared. So the powers of a are going down by 1, powers of b are going up by 1. So a squared b cubed plus a b to the power of 4 plus b to the power of 5. And then let's put the coefficients in just by taking this row. We have this one's five, this one's 10, this one's also 10, and then this one's five. And then we've got these imaginary ones at the end. Another nice observation is that this is symmetric. So we have one, five, 10, and then we have 10, five, one. So you can just kind of work out half of it and then the rest just followed by symmetry, which is another useful trick. So let's do one more example. Um, but this time, instead of a and b, we're going to have x plus 2y. And let's say we want to find this to the power of 3. So now we've got to be careful because we've got these constants inside. But we can just use Pascal by associating with new constants. So if I just call x to be a and b to be 2y, then this is the same as a plus b cubed. And then, well, we've done the calculation already, but this, uh, this is just a cubed plus 3a squared b plus three a b, b squared, plus b cubed. And then we can just substitute back in for x and y. So remember, a equals x, so x cubed here, and b equals two times y. 
So this is 3 times, oh, not A, sorry. <laughs> this is x. x squared times b, which is 2y, plus 3 times x times 2y squared, plus 2y cubed. And this way we can now simplify by just bringing out the constants to the front. So it's just a nice method to find out the constants. So this comes out to be x cubed plus, what well, is this, 6, x squared y, plus we have 2 squared, so this is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12x 12 times y squared, and finally we have 2 cubed, which is 8, so 8y cubed. And there you go, so we've worked out what x plus 2y cubed is, and also how to find um, any uh, the coefficients of any binomial expansion.